I'm Rachel. Hi guys, how are you? Great, how are you? Doing well. So with the series, it is obviously, it's been a long time coming. People wanted a Kindred adaptation. It's been in the works and now we're finally getting to see it. And so I want to know for each of you, what was it that kind of drew you into the uh, book and the series in the first place and made you want to be a part of it? Shreya, if you want to start? Yeah, to be a part of Octavia Butler's legacy is is amazing. It's tremendous. Um, and I'm so honored to be a part of it, to be adding to it as a, as a new character that's not in her book. Um, the, the way that she writes and, and the themes that she writes about, uh, the, uh, what she calls into question, I'm just so happy to be a part of that. So for me, it was always Octavia. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I've been a fan of the book ever since I read it, and uh, I I remember when I got the audition and I and I read the pilot, and I just felt like it was the perfect way to adapt this story uh, for the screen. It's it's still one of the best pilots I've ever read, and so I immediately was like, all right, you gotta get <laughs> you, you gotta get this audition right. Um, but the combination of Octavia and and Brandon, who is is just such a singular and amazing writer were, were really the things that you know made this made this project a no-brainer i agree with both of um with both of those statements and i just want to add that the thing that i loved about um the book and about being part of this series is that it allows the audience the reader the viewer uh a different entry point into this topic and into this time um through dana you know, mm. through Dana coming in to uh, ant the antebellum South with all of the knowledge and resources of a modern woman, of a modern black woman, and figuring it, it, figuring it out in real time. I was doing that as a reader. I kept asking myself, what would I do? Oh my goodness, what would I do in this moment? What would I do? You know, if I had a go bag, what would be in my go bag? Yeah. What would I be taking, you mm -hmm. know? And I really think that it's going to be so fascinating for each and every viewer, because it's gonna be a singular experience to each, how they answer that question of what would you do? Yeah. And then also kind of, you mentioned Dana is our guide into this world, mm -hmm. but Tria, you're kind of her guide when she gets mm -hmm. into the past mm -hmm. because she doesn't know what's going on. And then she sees her mother from the jump and then later on in the pilot. And that relationship is so important and it works really well, even though we only get really brief moments in that first episode. And so what was it like working with Mallory and kind of finding that balance? Because the last time you saw your character saw Dana, she was a child in the 90s. And so it works, but it is off, off, like it's so weird how it works so well. And mm. this, how did you guys kind of build that? Yeah, well, first of all, Mallory Johnson um, is such a wonderful <laughs> human. She's a she's a special actor, and I had such a wonderful time on set with her. So it was really easy. She makes it easy. Um, but the the relationship, it was a really interesting one because there's grief there. Mm -hmm. So uh, so so c coming to find your long lost relative, my long lost daughter whom I thought I'd never be able to see again and then for her her mother whom she thought was no longer living um we had to reconcile the gr you hopefully you will see us reconciling that grief in this new introduction to one another mm -hmm. um and as you as as the series goes along you'll see our relationship develop a lot more and I what's fun uh, what's not fun but like what is the genre aspect of this show is that it is a time travel show and we get to see the kind of two sides of sort of modern day because it's 2016 mm -hmm. and uh, back in the past. And so for each of you, how was it kind of getting to interact with the genre in that way, and especially with one that is so heavy versus a lot of the other time travel kind of shows and movies we've seen where it's a lighter take on time travel mm -hmm. where this is, this is not, it's a very serious mm -hmm. uh, Journey to the past. Yeah. Uh, Sophia, you start. Yeah, 
Oh, no, I was just going <clears> to, <throat> it just made me think, the, the, your wording of it made me think about how Octavia Butler referred to it as a grim fantasy. Mm -hmm. Those two words, they seem in juxtaposition with one another, you know, because when I fantasize, I definitely don't fantasize about going back in time. <laughs> okay. Trust and believe. Definitely not. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so it was something in terms of the, the time travel aspect of it. I always liken it um, to what I think we do still need to do very much just um, as American citizens is we always need to go back and reconcile with our history it needs to happen continually and actually happens needs to happen more often than um, what I think we get opportunity and space for uh, and so being a part of this story it's very much that bow and arrow aspect of things where you need to draw back the further you can draw back and gain all of the knowledge and the wisdom and the resources from our people whose shoulders we stand on right all of us we stand on the shoulders of these men and women uh, when we do that, just like that arrow, we draw back and we launch further into the greatness of what our destiny can be if we reconcile our past. Period. I have nothing to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I was going to ask all of you as a final question. Uh, obviously, Kindred has a history. People have read it. People know the story. But the show is a completely different juggernaut. And so what do you each hope audiences take away when they get to see Kindred. Austin, if you want to start. I hope uh, I hope that audiences, I think to Sophina's point, I think I want audiences to really consider um, you know, the question that I think Octavia is wrestling with in this book is that how easy it is to accept a system of slavery. Mm -hmm. And I and I want audiences to um, to be emboldened to make sure that we don't actually go backward in time. That time travel actually remains um, a, a a function of uh, science fiction, literature, and movies, mm -hmm. and that it doesn't actually become our reality. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for talking with me today. I can't wait for audiences to get to see Kindred. Yay. I think it's incredibly important, um, and I just can't wait for everyone to get to dive in mm -hmm. and I'll talk about it. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.